You should take a look at the cricket, they said. What? said I. Cricket? It's a bit slow and boring. Not that sort of cricket. Cricket! Who do you think I am? Sir David Attenborough? No, the cricket. In fact, the cricket too, they said. The one from Calibre Gun. And welcome to AAR on Air. Today it's the turn of the Calibre Gun Cricket 2. And the keywords today look like being innovation and engineering again. You know, we do seem to be seeing quite a lot of new ideas and high quality engineering coming from Russia these days. This is the Gen 2 Cricket, with the original being launched back in 2006 and saw pretty instant acceptance and success. This is designed in Russia and assembled in the Czech Republic, which is of course is the home of CZ, but more about that later. So let's go straight to the walk around and take a closer look at this rather appealing little bullpup. Dimensions first, the length is 690 millimetres or 26.8 inches with a barrel length of 450 millimetres or 17.7 inches and it tops the scales without a scope fitted at 3.2 kilograms or around 7.1 pounds. It has a nice combination of black and wood finish and as a good friend of mine always says, less is more. And looking at the two complementary colours and materials, it would be wrong with any other colours or materials put into the mix. So, from the front as usual, the barrel on this 177 calibre version is the same as the 22 version and is a CZ manufactured item, with the 0.25 and 0.30 versions which are available having Lothar Walther barrels fitted. Nice. Yes, I said 0 .30 calibre in the bullpup. This is capable of some silly power levels for the FAC boys amongst us, and yet easily capable at lower sub 12 foot pound levels for such as the UK market. The barrel is fully shrouded and it has a built in moderator in there as well all make this pretty quiet, even at those higher power levels that we've just mentioned. Below this is the oversized manometer or gauge, which shows the 300 bar fill pressure this is able to go to, meaning with the built-in regulator a higher shot count potential, giving, for example, 60 shots in 177 at 18 foot-pounds, according to their specs which in lower sub-12 will naturally be even higher shot count. The higher calibers do have a slightly bigger air chamber of 350cc to still help keep that shot count high, meaning the 0 .30 at 96 foot-pounds is still capable of 30 good shots from a fill, which when I think about the 0 .30 that I own, which is only good for around 15 full power shots, just shows how they have improved the efficiency with this little bullpup. To fill this is a simple pull on the filler port surround that is spring loaded and insert the supplied filler probe, fill up to the 300 bar and you're ready. Now, when you pull it out, the cover snaps back into place. So, no covers or bungs to lose here and no real chance of forgetting to pull the dust cover back into place. Nice. Moving back we come to the all wooden stock which is of high quality and has some really nice ergonomic shaping and flowing curves to it. It forms the trigger guard and the skeleton stock and even incorporates a built-in and hidden magazine holder. This is the WSA stock and there is the option of the WB stock which incorporates storage 
for up to four spare magazines, if you prefer. To the rear of this is an adjustable butt pad, which again is very simple. Just unscrew the centre machine screw and slide to the preferred position and then re-tighten. The trigger is fully adjustable and is a two-stage item which comes quite light from the factory and is really nice to use once you get used to the lightness. But you do of course have the option to adjust it if you find it too light. For me, it was perfect. The trigger itself is quite broad and wide and to me adds to the overall comfort. The grip is stippled and is what I'm starting to feel like the Russian straight up and down fitting, which again, I'm starting to like. The stock is fully and truly ambidextrous, primarily through its simplicity, but also because of the ability to change over the side lever action, which I'll show you later. The wooden feel continues up to the cheek rest. And at first I thought, this was a plastic faux wood piece, but when you do look closely, this is a very thin piece of real wood and is really nicely finished. If I was going to get picky here, I do think a material-based cover would add to the overall comfort. But it is a natural material and isn't what I would call uncomfortable. The top rail is a 22mm rail for your scopes. Again, this is becoming far more popular on these air guns these days and does make life easier if you're dropping scopes on and off the gun from time to time and helps keep closer zeros on your scopes. Below this is that side lever cocking arm, which is smooth and definite. No play in the action and a definite clunk at the end of the pull. To change this from left to right is a simple case of taking off the side panel on the left hand side which reveals the internals and the pre-drilled and pre-threaded point to attach the action to from the right hand side. Then once you've swapped over from right to left simply replace the left hand panel on the right hand side to finish it off. Quite simple really. Below this is the safety. Not seen it yet? <laughs> okay this is another innovative design that had me scratching my head to find it initially. It is a rotating wheel around the outside of the air cylinder which shows a red indicator when it's in fire, which disappears behind the stock when it's in safe mode. The next thing to take a look at is the magazine, which again is about as simple as you can get. But there is a twist to the loading and double use options once it's in the gun. So the round magazine first, this is the 177 option and has space for 14 rounds of your favourite pellets and is simply a drop into the all alloy machined round magazine. These are held in place by a simple o-ring, no complaints from me here. To load it into the gun, pull back all the way on the cocking lever, then pull and hold back the external lever on the right hand side. Slot in your full magazine and then you have two options. Move the lever into position one and this will stop the magazine from automatically indexing, but allow you to move it freely. Alternatively, move it into position two and this will set the magazine to self-index. This does give another level of safety, if nothing else. Well, that is pretty much the walk around completed. Let's just take a look at the power levels on this sub 12 foot pound regulated Cricut 2, shall we? Well, over the chrono, I saw a maximum of 789 feet per second using the standard 8.44 grain JSBs, which gave this a healthy and usable 11.67 foot-pounds 
or 15.82 joules. So for a sub 12 foot pound gun, that's more than acceptable. So it feels good, it looks good, it's nicely thought through and engineered, but can we hit the proverbial barn door with this? For the target work, I fitted a superb Vector Optics Taurus, a 5 to 30 by 56 first focal plane, which could really be able to stretch this bullpup out comfortably on the 40 metre range. Here goes. Really, really nice. What a pleasure to use and very rewarding. Enough said when the results speak for themselves. I suppose the only thing left to tell you is the price. This is around £1,295 UK and after using this and being around the overall build quality and feel, I can see the money in this. I realise this isn't in everybody's budget and there is a lot of people out there that will prefer to spend even more. I would say it's all about value for money and being around so many high cost guns from some of the more popular and heavily advertised manufacturers, I can honestly say this does represent good value for money. This is pretty well sorted. I suppose being the Mark II version, you would have expected it to have been. I have shown this to several people since having it in my possession and they all gave very positive feedback and comments about this. And a lot of them had that, I wonder if I can get away with buying this and that, what will the missus say look in their eye? There aren't many people with these in the UK and I think Vector Air are one of the first to get them in. If you do get a chance to get hold of one of these, I would suggest you take the opportunity just before you rush out and join the queue for the usual branded air rifles and bullpups. You may be surprised. Hopefully you've enjoyed this week's review. If you have, please give us the usual thumbs up. Subscribe, of course, because there's loads more new and exciting stuff in the pipeline. <laughs> and I really mean that. Hit the alarm bell to make sure you're notified when the new reviews come out and take a look at this little lot as always and you may be able to get chance to join in with the ever-growing forums and links etc. Thank you of course to Vector Air for the loan of the guns and that wonderful Taurus scope which I feel a review is probably likely as soon as I get the new scope cam sorted which hopefully will be very soon. That's it. Thank you for your time. Stay safe and shoot safe. And I'll see you next Friday. So, thank you so much for watching.